My name is Eddie. I served 25 years to life in prison. I am currently the Prison Fellowship Academy Program Manager here in the North Dakota State Prison in Bismarck. Arriving in prison really challenges my particular worldview. Is it even possible uh, to be able to thrive in that type of environment in prison? It's such a um, isolated, restricted, punitive environment, and the two terms just clash in such a way. Is it even possible to even consider, you know, what does it look like to thrive in, in prison and to be the best that you can be, to change your worldview and to reconcile two different situations or two different clashes of culture and, and to do well. At the age of 22, I was sentenced to die in the gas chamber and found myself incarcerated on death row. It was a very difficult time for my life. I struggled with a lot of insecurities, a lot of thoughts of guilt, uh, condemnation, and shame. And I was trying to reconcile uh, the capital punishment and what that meant for me as a young man. I uh, spent a number of years in solitary confinement wrestling with that and had an opportunity to meet the Prison Fellowship uh, founder, Chuck Colson. Chuck Colson actually came to our prison for a event, an evangelistic event. And one of the things that Chuck Colson purposed in his heart to do in every prison that he went to that had a death row, he came and, and visited. So he was able to come by and visit in my cell. Uh, we sat down, spent about an, half an hour together, praying together, and he really helped me grasp the justice side of, of incarceration and what that looks like. And as a young man, he was helping me to look at the victims of crime and how my crime would have affected the victims. Up until that point, I was very immature. Uh, I only thought about myself. I was pretty manipulative. Whenever I found myself in trouble, I was always looking for ways to maybe get out of trouble and manipulate that. And he helped me really to start taking responsibility for that, really searching my heart, searching my life to see why I committed my crime and how it affected other people. And when my convictions were overturned by the state Supreme Court, I was able to go back into court and really face up to what I did and accept responsibility for what I did. And I was able to plead guilty to my crimes. Some of the top three habits or some of the habits that I began to develop in prison is I started to take better physical care of myself. I, I quit smoking cigarettes. I started exercising in prison. Um, and I began to pursue an education. I was confronted with the fact that I didn't have much of an education and I was able to take community college courses in prison. And then I also began to do institutional programming, mental health pro programming in prison. And then also began to uh, take educational courses and start working towards a degree. Uh, work was a big factor for me as well. I worked very hard in the prison. I went out on the prison gun gang. I would work out in the fields um, in the prison and worked consistently throughout the 25 year period that I served in prison. Coming out of prison, I think um, the programming in prison definitely helped me, um, especially when it came to work ethics. I learned a very, I had a very strong worth, work ethic coming out of prison and that was something that was really beneficial to me. I was also involved in the church. Obviously in prison, I was a leader in the prison church. I had a very strong faith in God in prison. And uh, those factors in themselves, I think the work ethic was probably the, the, the biggest thing was my work ethic, being willing to work, being willing to do whatever my hands found to do, um, helped me uh, in my transition. Before I came out of prison, I had a mentoring team and, and uh, a former area director for Prison Fellowship came down and met with me in the prison. They had four months to prepare me for release. And I'll never forget the statement that he made to me. He said, Eddie, with your freedom comes a great deal of responsibility. And I've always taken that to heart. And I've realized that um, I was gonna take advantage of this opportunity that I had to be released and that I was responsible for my freedom. And I've never forgotten that saying. Um, I've thought about it. I think the two terms go to go hand in hand. And today, I've um, been out of prison now for 19 years. 
and I am extremely responsible. And I'm not only responsible for myself, but I'm responsible for my wife and my children. I am a servant in my church. I serve in men's ministry in my church. I've been a leader in my church, a leader in missions in my community as well. And um, so responsibility um, just throughout my life, I've built accountability and responsibility into my life. It's very important to be connected to a positive community in prison. I think all of us have a tendency to isolate, possibly to uh, default to our own way. And I think it's very important in prison to find community in there, whether it's in a prison fellowship academy setting, whether it's in the church, uh, maybe in education, but it's very important to align yourselves and connect with people in prison that are making positive transformational changes in their life and not just sit in prison and, and do your time. Serving 25 years in prison, I was so grateful uh, to be delivered uh, from death row. Um, I immediately uh, joined the prison church. Um, that was where I found my sense of community in the prison, was in the prison church. I was a leader inside of the prison church and uh, developed all of my relationships in there and um, reached out to institutional chaplains uh, that have invested in me and it was very meaningful to me. Some of those relationships I have now, 44 years later, some of the relationships that I had in prison formed in those communities I still have today and they're still very beneficial in my life, really impact my life today. There were a lot of individuals um, in the chaplaincy, on the security side of the prison that have invested in me as a young man and I found that that was very, very important to me uh, to find purpose and meaning. Uh, so often people just drift in prison and they get caught up in that prison culture and they continue on um, in the lifestyle that they lived on the streets. They continue on in that prison lifestyle, that prison culture that was very, very detrimental. It was something that I had prided myself in as a young man um, that, that the idea that the prison culture, that you're a convict, and we live in a culture that glorifies that, con that glorifies that prison worldview, that prison mindset. You see it in movies, you see it in documentaries, and it was something that I embraced at an early age, but it was very, very detrimental to my life, very detrimental to my family, and very detrimental to society. So um, it's very important to change your thinking, change your worldview, and to seek out people that have a different set of values and form a different community. My heart is for the long-term man that's in prison. Uh, in throughout our nation's prisons, there are many individuals that find themselves in prison with a natural life sentence. And my heart has always been for them to be able to find a life of purpose and to find a, a life of meaning within the context of, of their environment. And I would just start by asking questions. You know, is there a purpose of this? Is there a creator? Am I created? Uh, what is my purpose in life? I would also ask, um, what's wrong with me? How did I find myself in this situation? What's wrong with me? Is there a remedy to this? Is there life after death? And then I always ask myself, what time is it? What time is it? And I think that purpose in the prison setting has to come from something outside of yourself. It, it has to come from, from your creator. It has to come from your faith. Um, you could study and you could be a nihilist and there's no such thing as meaning, or you can be an existentialist where you try to find meaning in the things that you do and create your own meaning. But at the end of the day, ultimately, for a person that's doing a lot of time in prison or any time in prison, they have to find that, that purpose and that meaning in something that's outside of themselves, something that's greater than themselves that they can commit to.